Hello, I'm Atsubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, today is Friday, praise God. And my prayer for you is that every one of those teachings I've been sharing with you this whole week, I pray that the Spirit of God will give you understanding. You see, because if the Word of God doesn't enter your mind, enter your mind, you won't see the result in your life. I'll explain that to you as we go on the broadcast. But before we do so, can we call for that daily bread? Join me right now and release your faith as we declare, say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. And I receive enough for Saturday and Sunday. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. And so shall it be in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this whole uh, month, the theme the Lord gave us for this month is more grace. And that's why he said the message is titled More Grace. And then I've, I began to talk to you about prayer. Prayer. And that's because the Lord began to speak to me and say, a lot of my children don't pray. Now, remember I was talking to you, I was giving you an example about praying for the nation, how, how a lot of churches gather together. Now, I'm using our nation as an example. Now, A lot of churches gather together and then they pray. And you don't see the change in the nation. For many years, many years, many years, you know, I, I personally, I grew up. Now, I, I know, you, you know, it's it's okay for us to think if we were not praying, maybe things would have been worse. Yes, but the point is, we that are praying, a lot of believers that are praying, are not putting themselves in to be to be really the, a part of what they are praying about. But that's the challenge. And it's the same thing you face in, in your family life. It's the same thing you face in your marriage. It's the same thing you face at your job. Now, so we find lots of people who are doing the praying, but not putting themselves in the prayer. So we pray for our nation. We pray for our family. But then, first and foremost, prayer, I told you, is an interaction between you and God. You are the spirit. And if you are really praying, the one you're praying with. Now, I want you to understand this idea. I didn't say the one you are praying to. We pray to him, yes. But then we also pray with him. He has given us his spirit to help us. Because the Bible says we do not even know what we should pray for as we ought to know. So, God, knowing this, gives his spirit to us. And what does that spirit do? He helps our infirmity. He gives us utterance in the things we pray about. Now, this utterance can be in tongues, like most of us, you know. Now, they call, they call those of us that speak in tongues the Pentecostals. Now, the truth is this. Every believer in Jesus Christ ought to speak in tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, something is not complete about you. Now you better believe it. You say, oh, well, do you mean... Well, you know, listen, listen. Jesus clearly said, These signs shall follow them that believe. They will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. Now, Jesus said that because when you believe in him, the first thing that's going to be done or the first thing that's going to happen in your life when you believe in Jesus is that you will receive his spirit. His spirit comes to dwell inside you to help you do the things that he would love you to do because you believe in him. We cast out devils by the spirit of God. So if you believe as a child of God, you can cast out devils. And casting out devils is done by the spirit of God. So because of that, you believe you need the Spirit of God. So if the Spirit of God is in you to help you cast out devils, the same Spirit, not another one, is what gives you utterance when you pray in tongues. So if you believe you can cast out devils, if you believe 
every child of God should cast out devils, then you should believe that every child of God filled with the Holy Ghost should speak in tongues. You see that now? So it's not something we should be debating about. Forget all those debating. Simply, this is for your benefit. I mean, it's like someone tells you or the government tells you, look, um, we are going to be providing free education for every primary education um, level. You know, and then now that's supposed to be to your benefit. But I imagine someone coming here to argue and say, but if the government does that, is it unity cost inflation? If the government, what will be the economic impact? Now, you, you know there are people who always argue about everything. <laughs> it's good. The question is, do you need your children to go to school? Yes. Is that free education going to aid your children going to school? Yes. So what are we talking about? See that now? Now, God has given us his spirit, so his spirit is in us. Now, why argue whether we should speak in tongues or not? If it is the spirit that gives us the ability to speak in tongues. So, if you don't speak in tongues, you are just the one not maximizing the ability that the Holy Spirit gives to you. It has nothing to do with belief system. It has nothing to do with the sect. It has nothing to do with church. It has everything to do with what will be advantageous to you. Advantageous to you speaking in tongues is very vital in your christian life and that's simply because the holy spirit speaks the language of god see that now i know your argument eh, but but is it not better now now paul spoke about this in first corinthians chapter 14 when he said look it's better to speak in in your understanding he says it's better to prophesy than to speak in tongues now paul was referring to when you are ministering to people when you are ministering to people of course common sense will let you know that it's better you minister to people in the language they can understand you see that now now for the same paul came up in in first corinthians chapter 2 and says we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery he said we speak the wisdom of God among those who are perfect. Now you see, he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that look, when we are ministering to the people, we should speak the language that they understand. But then in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says we speak the wisdom of God among the mature ones. So when we are in that mature, oh, how glorious, how glorious. Now think about, think about the friendship, think about being in your your friendship circle and, and you can freely speak the wisdom of god in its raw state think about that you know there is the beauty there's what the bible called the joy of salvation and and many christians haven't even smelt it the joy of salvation is not just Oh, I'm happy, I'm saved, my sins are forgiven. Yes, that's the gates. That's the entrance level. But you grow to that point where you begin to assess the wisdom of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> ah, <laughs> you know, you get to... You, you get to that place where... Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know... You, you get to that place where this, this is just exciting. Praise God. Now, I know I'm ministering to you, but um, it, it's just coming up you know, as though I'm ministering to mature people. So I'm trying to contain myself here. Praise God. Now, that's the thing. When you talk about the Holy Spirit, He just wants to show up. Every time you talk about Him, He wants to show up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, listening to this. So we speak the wisdom of God, he says, among those who are perfect, among the mature. So think about being around your friends and you are matured friends. And then, uh -huh, you know that, look, it always, this, this always happens if you're, if you're really in tune with the Spirit of God. You will always face this constraint. Sometimes, even as a preacher, if you're not preaching from the notes you have written, if you're if you if you've engaged yourself to preaching from the spirit, see now you will always have this constraint in you when you know what you want to communicate in your heart 
but you find it difficult to get the right words to communicate that thing. Now, you find this happening in languages. For example, if you can speak a certain language and you are communicating with somebody and then there is a phrase that you know in that language that English language does not have the sufficient words to convey that expression. So you find yourself telling someone, say, ah, I wish you could speak my language. I would have said this thing in my language. You would have understood it better. Now you use many words to explain that thing that you want to explain. And sometimes you still feel you didn't communicate it right. So you just break down and say, I, I wish you could speak my language, you could understand my language. Now it's the same thing with the spirit. So sometimes we communicate this truth and we go, ah, huh, it's, it's difficult. I, I can't find the words to express what I want to tell you. And so I try to use several words, several analogies to express it. Meanwhile, I could have just freely, if we could all understand the, the Holy Ghost to that point where we can understand tongues and interpret tongues. I could freely, so sometimes you hear a, a preacher preaching and then he switches to tongues. Now, at that point, most likely, majority of his listeners have been sold out. You know what I mean? They, he, he's lost them. Because they are now waiting, trying to understand what he's saying. Meanwhile, he's actually saying to something to them. Now, in that same congregation, there are people who can understand what he's saying. So what's going on? The wisdom of God is being spoken in, the, in a mystery. Now, when you are among the perfected ones, when you are among the mature ones, who are the mature ones? The mature ones are, when you are talking to them, they are not listening to what you are saying. They are listening to what the Spirit of God is communicating through you. Those are the matured ones. So you find you're, you're, you're talking to the matured ones and then you go, um, you, you're looking for words and you find them completing what you're trying to say. See that now? That's the matured ones. Now, why? Because they are flowing by the Spirit you were speaking. So in that setting, you, you freely just switch in tongues. And when you switch in tongues, those that are with you, now you, you, this, this, this will hardly happen in a full congregation. See that? Because you have several levels of people. I'm talking about, maybe you are like three of yourselves, three of your friends, four, five of you, and you guys are operating on the same frequency. You know what I mean? You know, there's a benchmark to these frequencies. <laughs> And then you just begin, also pray. Kakuka dege nefe de la bra. And and the other person responds. Now, why you guys do that? Someone who doesn't know what is going on will come in and think maybe you guys are praying, but you're not really praying. You guys are communicating. And what's going on in the midst of that? As you communicate like that a new and fresh understanding begins to come to your spirit. Now, listen to me. As a child of God, there must be growth in your life and around your companions. You should have friends by which you grow spiritually. If this is not happening in your life, I can tell you one of these things. is either you are less excited being a Christian than you were several years ago when you got born again. I can tell you this for free. Because simply put, you got to a threshold of your life spiritually and you stopped growing. You just begin to partake in activities that are going on around you, but less growth. Growth is not the multiplicity of messages you have listened to. Though in growing, you will listen to a lot of things. But then, 
The things you are listening to must be things that will encourage your growth. And growth will happen in communication, in, 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 in that cycle of communication. So amongst your friends, the people you call your best friends, if you don't see these growth taking place, your worries of five years ago will still be your worries of today. See that? The things you're concerned about seven years ago will still be the same things you're concerned about today. Now that's an indication that for those five years, for those seven years, no growth has taken place in you even though you know how to quote more scriptures. But growth has not taken place. Your growth is seen in how easy it is for you to yield to the Spirit of God and get things from the Spirit of God. That's how you know you're growing. So someone begins to speak in other tongues. He is not praying because... Because there, there are times we are praying to God and nobody needs to understand what we are saying. But then there are times we make expressions in the Spirit. For example, Jesus, the Bible said, He rejoiced in the Spirit. How do you think He did that? You find this in Luke chapter 10. How do you think Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit? The writer knows that the communication, when you communicate and say somebody said something in the spirit, he knows you're saying he spoke in tongues. So when he said Jesus rejoiced in the spirit, what was he saying? He saw that Jesus was excited and he muttered things in other tongues. You see that now? Paul in 1 Corinthians 14 says, we pray in the spirit and we sing in the spirit. What is he talking about? We pray in the Holy Ghost in other tongues. And we sing in other tongues. Praise God. Now this, I'm telling you this. These are the things that constitute having that joy in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> if you don't experience these things I'm sharing with you, then you, you need to retrace your steps. We don't depend on anything outside to give us joy. We develop joy from within us. Praise God. My time is up for today. Pray. Now this, this, now, I, I, listen, I've got lots and loads and loads of things to share with you about these things. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me just pray with you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I bless everyone that is listening right now. And I declare, Lord, let the heavens open and let a renew and genuine work of the Spirit be taking place in their lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Have the best weekend ever. And get ready, Monday is the 31st of October. And we are going to be having our prayer and fasting meeting on Tuesday. But we are going to start 12 midnight on Monday. I'll tell you more about this on Monday. God bless you. I'm a super judge. Bye-bye.